Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good afternoon. It is the Earth Master back here once again on this Monday. It is June 5th, 2023, about 1.06 p.m. here along the West Coast in the state of California. The latest earthquake shows a 1.6 up here into the region of the West Coast. We did see some activity kind of ramping its way up here uh, across areas of the Gulf of Mexico yesterday. We did see that little oddball earthquake. Also increasing movement here across the northern edge here of the Caribbean plate and the southern edge of the North American plate. Uh, definitely a lot of noticeable strain out here, including an earthquake well inland, but very shallow, 4.2, 10 kilometers deep here into the Sierra Madre uh, area of Mexico. A uh, little odd earthquake. Either way, it's definitely uh, an uptick in earthquake movement here across the region. We'll continue to watch this area. As uh, far as the west coast goes, a little bit of activity lighting up. I don't think we've seen anything major overnight. Uh, only one 2.5 up here north um, around the Santa Rosa area. About the latest uh, two-pointer, 2.5 I should say. A little bit of movement up north of Reno as well. Mostly smaller microquakes. Not noticing any major swarm going on. Uh, just very typical there along the west coast for now. Some activity up in Washington and into the Idaho area. The rest of the country here fairly minimal. Again, watch this region. We could see some uptick uh, across the North American continent here due to uh, the increasing activity here, increasing pressure, so to speak, across the Caribbean plate area. Down into South America, latest one of 4.2, somewhat uh, deep there into the Peru Chile Trench. 90 kilometers, been an overall trend of some deeper movement activity there over the past few days. Continue to watch this. This whole area out here is definitely showing some uptick, mostly around the southern edge here of the uh, North American plate and uh, the South America region. Just getting a lot of squeezing going on there across the uh, Caribbean area. Uh, down into the um, geo or the uh, New Zealand area, mostly quiet, nothing really showing up. We did have some activity here yesterday, well south of New Zealand around the plate boundary, well south again. Um, I don't think we've seen anything overnight, but I am expecting this to kick up due to the activity around the New Zealand region. Looks like a little bit of activity here um, earlier today down in the South Island, nothing big. Looks like maybe a two-pointer, 2.5 or so. Nothing big showing up here across the area. We'll continue to watch the New Zealand region, though, for some movement. Far as the Western Pacific and adjacent plates over here, got some activity uh, kicking up here around the Northern Mariana Islands again. Some deeper movement quakes going on. Uh, looks like a 4.4 at 163 kilometers deep. Uh, also some activity down south here across the Indonesia region. A lot of this, though, um, just very typical to see. Not really seeing any major swarming going on. Any major unusual activity here across the region. All looks uh, fairly typical. 4.6, the Andaman Islands area from yesterday. Uh, there's a China earthquake from yesterday as well. That was a 4.4. Um, far as the rest of the world goes, some movement up in Turkey it looks like. Also, uh, a little bit of activity from yesterday down into the um, Aden, area, Aden Sea, Gulf of Aden. I believe that was from yesterday, that 4.6. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, that's from late uh, afternoon yesterday. A little odd movement going on across this area. Not for sure exactly what it's leading to, but we've definitely seen some, uh, some odd adjustment going on. The Atlantic Ocean, pretty calm and clear for now. Uh, nothing going on way up north into the polar regions. A little bit of activity here into northern Alaska. Uh, let's go ahead and check this out on the map. Uh, this is a little out of the norm up here, northeast of Fairbanks, seeing a, a small amount of earthquake activity today. The largest, though, 3.5. Again, not very typical to see movement up here. It does happen, but, uh, it's, you know, when it does happen, it kind of catches my eye uh, because I look at these maps 24 hours a day, you know, these, uh, these graphs here. And uh, not too often do we see earthquake activity well up here. Continue to watch that, though. Uh, let's see. I think that's about it for earthquake activity. Uh, again, a couple n areas to watch here with the uptick in the Caribbean movement. Uh, Puerto Rico area uh, and areas to the northwest here. Bahamas. All these areas can see some large earthquakes. Uh, let's go ahead and check out a uh, catalog book, book here from the USGS. I want to go 
6.5 and above and see what we got here historically within that region. See when the last major earthquake was uh, in this area of the Caribbean plate area. Of course, Puerto Rico did have a, they had a little bit of movement here. I don't want to go too much into South America because that obviously is a big time producer of earthquakes. So just specifically within this rectangle I drew, you can see the Caribbean plate well defined here. Uh, subduction zones over here to the east, the west, uh, some uh, subduction zones up here around the Puerto Rico Trench. The latest earthquake looks like a 6.5. Not really worried too much about this Middle America Trench area. Uh, they always get earthquakes over there. I'm more concerned with around the Cayman Islands area and east uh, along this plate boundary. It looks like a 6.8 back in 2004. There was a 7.5 Honduras. I remember that one. It's already been that long. Holy smokes. Wow. It just seems like it was yesterday, five years ago. Okay. Uh, that was back in 2018. Also 6.8 back in 1910. Uh, 2009, uh, 7.3, 6.7 back in 1999. So let's see what we got here around Jamaica. 6.8 back in 1941. Uh, there's that 7.7 .7 back in 2020. Over here around Cuba, 6.7, 1932, 1947 for a 6.6. .6. And of course over here, I know we got uh, some large quakes there from in the recent past, 2021, 2010. So, it, you know, it's really hard to say what could be overdue here. Uh, we do know that this plate boundary is very active. Uh, regular er intervals of large earthquakes look, looks to be around 100 years or so within this area. So we have seen some larger movement over the past few years and the past century. Um, but, you know, who's to say some of these areas are lacking uh, some potential here. L like this segment here across uh, Cuba. There's a little subduction zone here. There's a little extensive area that really hasn't seen anything. Uh, this was back in 1992. And, of course, further west, some larger movement. But specifically in this area, it looks like things may be uh, slightly overdue in that region. But uh, either way, just wanted to look at that, see what we got for uh, historical data continue to watch that uh, movement though all right space weather activity here moving on um, things are well 99 percent chance for a c flare m flare at 30 x flare around 10 percent chance not a big threat right now it looks fairly steady as far as any um, flaring goes on the sun but uh, we're still continuing to watch 3323 which is a little bit more center disc now but it's yeah i don't know what's going on with these sunspots here they just disorganized they look somewhat healthy as they come around the bend, and then they just, something tames them down. It's almost like they're being observed. It's an observer effect, right? In quantum physics, where if you observe something, it behaves differently. Maybe that's what we're looking at. Uh, one of the uh, quantum, well, this is <laughs> a lot bigger than quantum physics. Um, but still, the observer effect uh, plays a part in everything large and small. So for now, that's kind of deteriorating. It's looking not good uh, if you want flaring. Uh, this sunspot right right here, southeastern limb, that's going to be 3327. Latest imagery here still shows a little bit of complex structure within this sunspot, northern core. We'll continue to watch that and see what happens. But then again, maybe we shouldn't watch it. Maybe we'll just pretend it doesn't exist and it will let itself know that uh, hey i'm right here with a big x flare you never know uh, northeastern limb of the sun um there's a sunspot region but it's not all that active there we'll continue to watch this though but again well you know let's let's do a little experiment here we're we're not even going to talk about uh 33 27 in future updates and just see what happens okay we're going to pretend like it doesn't exist all right, as uh, far as weather activity goes, I'm a big fan of quantum physics. You know, things work in the uh, very uh, micro department there. It's really interesting how uh, reality is put together. So here in Northern California, we do have a thunderstorm threat out here for marginal risk for severe weather. That includes my area. Here around Redding and Chico, California, mostly uh, looks like some wind threats. Nothing big. Um, 
no tornado threat. Well, maybe a 2% chance of tornadoes around uh, Brownsville, Texas. But for the most part, um, a lot of the activity is out here in the west today. Now, storms are already starting to fire up. Looks like tomorrow will be the day as well. Uh, with a little bit more marginal risk of severe weather. Mostly wind and some hail out here across the west coast as well. Thunderstorm threat here tonight or today. A little bit later on this afternoon, it extends further into the valley of Sacramento, Sacramento Valley. Uh, so this is going to be an interesting night. I'm trying to get a barbecue in real quick, uh, cooking up some cheeseburgers here for me and Missy Mimi's. And um, it's uh, 97 degrees right now and um, a little bit humid out here. So there's a little bit of moisture to work with here across the West Coast as far as producing thunderstorms. So I'm going to keep an eye on that. Uh, if we do get some good storms firing up, then I will be live streaming. Uh, a quick glance here at the HRR model. Well, they got a couple of these built up. We'll show possible storms brewing up here and extending over into the valley regions. Now, kind of hard to say, um, you know, how strong these storms will be. They are moving. If you look on the map here, they're moving from east to west. Uh, and that's due to a low pressure system here spinning counterclockwise pulling over some moisture, firing up some storms, um, and they're all kind of heading off to the west here. It's crazy. But uh, that's normally, when we do get some storms, that's normally the direction that they come from. They come off the Sierras. We'll see if they hold together or not. Um, either way, I think Chico area is going to get some good storms there. Uh, and, of course, lightning and whatnot. Uh, and I'll be ready for it. That's why I'm getting my barbecue done a little bit early today, folks. Just to make sure that I'm available this late afternoon and evening to uh, to watch the storms. That's what I do. Daily update here from Kilauea. Currently not erupting. Elevated, elevated seismicity continues at the Kilauea summit. Uh, daily rates continue to be variable. Low earthquakes, though, are dropping not a whole lot of earthquakes there in the last couple days have been dropping off a little bit. But again, we'll continue to watch this and report back on it. Have a good day, folks. We'll catch you guys back here a little bit later on uh, this evening with the update video. Or uh, if we do get some storms firing up, we will pop up here on a separate live stream to, uh, to provide a little view. Have a good day, folks. We'll catch you guys a little bit later.